Fallout New Vegas is getting a remake. For those that don't know, the New Vegas remake has been in production for several years now, but it's not from Bethesda or Obsidian, it's being made by an independent mod team. This is not a simple remaster, they're completely remaking Fallout New Vegas from scratch, all in Fallout 4's engine. They have to redo everything, the world space, the NPCs, the quests, weapons and armor, and even the voice lines. It's not an official remake, but the mod team is still going to be very faithful to the original game, making only a few minor changes that won't compromise the integrity of New Vegas' design. Development on the project started in 2017, and back then it seemed like a distant pipe dream, but five years later, the remake has made some impressive progress, especially as of late. Every year, they have a showcase week at the end of October, and with this latest showcase week, they showed off some of the areas and features they just recently completed. At this point, they've got a considerable portion of the game already done, and they seem dead set on finishing the project too. Like there's a pretty good chance that we'll actually be getting a Fallout New Vegas remake in the near future. So in this video, we'll be going over everything that we currently know about the Fallout 4 New Vegas remake. Some things have changed from the original, and I think it's important to highlight all the details and differences. I'm sure you guys have plenty of questions too, so I'll also be addressing those along the way. Before I get started though, I wanted to make it clear that this is not the same thing as the Project Mojave mod. Project Mojave is a mod for Fallout 4 that includes a small chunk of New Vegas' world space. It was made by a separate mod team, and it takes place during the events of Fallout 4, where you visit the Mojave as the sole survivor. It's still very early into development though, so there's not much to do there. For the sake of this video, I will be including some footage from Project Mojave in the background. On the other hand is Fallout 4 New Vegas which is the topic of this video. That's the one which is a complete remake, where you play as Courier 6. So, with that part cleared up, let's get into it. First, you can't have a game without a world space. So that's been one of the top priorities for the mod team. From what I can tell, it seems like they've got the vast majority of the world space already done. In both trailers and screenshots released by the mod team, they've shown off locations such as Good Springs, Prim, Nipton, Quarry Junction, Black Mountain, Jacobstown, some of the pre-war vaults, along with NCR and Legion camps. The list goes on and on, and I think you get the point. Meanwhile, their most recent update on the world space shows off areas like Red Rock Canyon and the Repcon facility. Really, the only big area they haven't shown off yet is the city of New Vegas itself. The mod team said they plan to work on the strip last, and that we won't be seeing it for quite some time. Additionally, they also noted that the world space itself is going to be 25% larger, and they mentioned making several tweaks that will keep us on our toes. So that means they may be changing up the layout of some locations, or even add in entirely new ones. As we all know, the Mojave is an unforgiving place, filled to the brim with deadly creatures, and it looks like the F4NV mod team has already finished all the unique creatures for New Vegas. The Cazadors, Geckos, Mantises, Bighorners, and even the Securitrons. For some creatures like the Rad Scorpions and Brahmin though, they'll simply be reusing the models from Fallout 4. But I know that for Deathclaws and Ghouls, they have been given completely new models which reflect their classic look in New Vegas. They've got plenty of work done on the countless number of interiors as well. I actually got to catch one of their live streams in which they showed development of the interior of Vault 3. Watching them work live really puts into perspective just how big of a project this really is. They have to manually place down every object you see, from the giant vault door to random crates and planks of wood, so it takes tons of man hours to complete a single cell, but over the years, they've managed to get quite a bit done. For some examples, this screenshot here shows the inside of the Brotherhood Bunker at Hidden Valley, while this one is from the inside of the Vicky and Vance Casino in Prim. More recently, they put their attention towards the unique player homes, such as the motel room and Novak. One important thing to note about these player homes is that they will work just like home plate in Fallout 4, meaning they function as a workshop and you can decorate the home as you see fit. However, this does not mean Fallout 4 New Vegas will be implementing Fallout 4's settlement system. The mod team has stated they will not be adding settlement building into the game. Sorry, Preston Garvey, but the Mojave Wasteland does not need your help. In this other player home screenshot, we can see the inside of a beautiful cabin, along with the good as boy Rex laying down in the living room. 
Perhaps more interesting than that though is the power armor in the other room. The power armor will indeed function like it does in Fallout 4. That's of course very different from how New Vegas and Fallout 3 handled power armor, where it functioned more like a regular outfit that you could slip on. In my opinion, I think it's a good change for them to take advantage of. I mean, we have to admit, having power armor function more like a mech suit makes more sense, and it's way cooler too. So the mod team isn't afraid to make some changes, but they all seem to be in good taste, and I trust their judgement. You don't have to worry about any changes to the story though, the mod team has a strict policy against any new writing, so if there are going to be any changes or additions to the story, they'll have to be very minor. After all, New Vegas' story and quests are the best part, and it's hard to improve upon it. But, the mod team did say that they might be restoring some cut content. New Vegas had tons of content that had to be cut out due to time constraints, and those restraints severely limited the amazing world that Obsidian wanted to create. Without any restraints, this mod team could bring us the fully envisioned version of Fallout New Vegas, with all that extra planned content included. No guarantees on that though, they still need to finish the base game first. And this doesn't mean they'll be re-implementing every piece of cut content. Quests that were deliberately cut to change the story will not be reintroduced. It would only be the stuff that was cut due to time constraints or engine limitations. As for the questing and dialogue right now, it seems the mod team hasn't made too much progress so far. New Vegas' quest can be very complicated. With all the different dialogue options and skill checks, there can be dozens of branching paths for each quest. This example right here shows us the giant web system that is Yes Man's dialogue. Many of the other important NPCs in this game can be just as, if not, even more complicated than that. So it definitely takes some time to make sure it's all working properly. Out of everything they've done so far in the project, I'd say the quest and dialogue are the furthest part behind. But that does make sense though, because in order to finish the quest, they'll have to iron out the world space first. So, once they get the world space completely done, we can expect them to make much more progress on the quest and NPCs. They did show off the very first quest where you start out at Doc Mitchell's house, in which you customize your character and set your stats and all that. This video alone shows off quite a bit, including the classic skills and leveling systems, along with the new revoiced dialogue. Thankfully, they've managed to get some high quality voice actors on board. Whoa, easy there, easy. You've been out cold a couple of days now. Why don't you just relax a second, get your bearings? We also got to look at the scene that plays when you enter Nipton for the first time, and the voice actor of Oliver Swanwick especially did a phenomenal job. Yeah! Who won the lottery? I did! Smell that air! Couldn't you just drink it like booze? <laughs> Dare I say, the voice acting might be better than the original. And as you saw from the video, the dialogue is going back to exactly how it was in Fallout New Vegas, meaning no voice player character and no more of that weird four option compass system that nobody liked either. But it does look like you'll be able to keep the cinematic dialogue camera if you so wish. Some more recent progress they made shows us that they will be returning to the classic heads up display as well, and that includes all the gameplay features that tie into it. Besides the classic aesthetic of the New Vegas HUD, you can see that there is a condition meter, meaning that armor and weapon degradation will be making a return. And in this screenshot, we can see the player character getting their rifle repaired by a weaponsmith. Also, you can see next to the condition meter is the ammunition type. In this screenshot, the player character has their 9mm pistol loaded with plus P ammunition, but in this other one, it's loaded with hollow points. So yes, ammo types and crafting is coming back too. The mod team clarified even further on the system, stating that weapon jamming will be included as well. You can pretty much expect every feature seen in Fallout New Vegas to make a return here in this remake, and that includes the karma and reputation system too. And of course, we can't forget about the leveling system. The perks, traits, and skills, it's all there. I'm not sure if the mod team will adjust the overall progression and the balancing of the game, but I would go ahead and assume it's going to be very close to the original. As for armor and clothing, it seems they've got a lot of work done in that area too. You can see in the mini screenshots and trailers all the various pieces of attire. It ranges from the common clothes you'll find, all the way to the unique sets, like the veteran ranger armor, and even the armor of Legate Lanius. And might I say, that armor looks glorious, truly worthy of being worn by the great monster of the east. Obviously, the art team knows what they're doing. They're absolutely nailing the aesthetics in this game, and that beautiful art design extends to the weapons as well. Take the Gauss rifle for example, it's stunning, and the attention to detail is outstanding, and there's plenty more where that came from. 
It seems they've already completed the majority of New Vegas' arsenal, and they've already got weapons such as the service rifle, 10mm pistol, 9mm pistol, caravan shotgun, hunting shotgun, anti-material rifle, hunting revolver, grease gun, and many, many more, many of which are already available as standalone mods for Fallout 4. Just this last week, they showed screenshots of even more weapons that are currently in production. Taking a look at the trail carbine, we can see it's been overhauled into a genuine Marlin Model 336, and it looks beautiful, so much more aesthetic than the original. In the same vein, the light machine gun has seen some improvements as well. It's still a wacky combo of the M60 and M249, but instead of using a detachable box magazine, it's now a properly belt-fed LMG. We can see just how far they plan to go with the attachments with the automatic rifle. In its default configuration, it'll look just like a standard 1918 BAR, but you can cut down the barrel and stock, or add on a foregrip and muzzle brake, and even extend the magazine, all the way out to a big drum if you so wish. This reminds me of the customization seen in Call of Duty Vanguard. While it was extremely cursed in that game, I think a system like this is well suited for Fallout, it just screams apocalyptic. Now the attachment system will work much like how it is in Fallout 4, where you have to use a workbench to craft and attach your modifications, but the devs noted that most of the attachments will have to be purchased from a vendor, while only uh, scrappy modifications can be made yourself. They won't be conforming to Fallout 4's heavily junk-based economy. This is Vegas, baby. It's all about cash, caps, and chips. Even more good news is that they'll flesh out the gunplay with systems like Bullet Counted Reload and Tactical Reload. And if you don't know what those are, well, basically, that means no more reloading 5 rounds into your lever action, even if you only shot 1, and no longer will your character charge or cock the gun during a Tactical Reload. A lot of these guns and gameplay systems made for Fallout 4 New Vegas have already been released as standalone mods for Fallout 4. As you can see from my gameplay in the background, I've already got a lot of them, and I'm having tons of fun. So even though we have to wait a while to play the New Vegas remake, we can enjoy some of their work in Fallout 4 in the meantime. As for how Fallout 4 mods will work with the New Vegas remake, well, uh, the mod team presumes that most mods won't work right out the gate. They may require some conversion to work properly, and they will be releasing a tutorial on how to do said conversion. That's really good to hear, because there's tons of mods available for Fallout 4, and I would love to bring over some of my favorite weapon and armor mods especially. That's really all I would need, because Fallout New Vegas already includes so many systems that Fallout 4 was just completely missing. Anyway, you may also be wondering about the DLC. Well, the mod team does not plan to work on the DLC at all until the base game is finished and released. Actually, they will include the mini DLCs like the Gunrunner's Arsenal and Courier Stash at release, so that means you can start out the game blasting away enemies with a grenade launcher while sipping on your Vault 13 canteen. Another common question I'm sure everyone is thinking about is exactly how much of the project is already done. Well, the mod team does not have any numbers for us. They say that information isn't too useful anyway. For me, well, uh, I'm not qualified to make an estimated guess. I'm not working on the project after all, but at the very least, it is evident that a good chunk of the game is completed. And that ties into perhaps the most commonly asked question that everyone watching this video is wondering. When will Fallout 4 New Vegas be released? When it's done. That's what the mod team tells us. They have no projected release date at all, and they won't be telling us a release date at any point in the future. They just plan on releasing Fallout 4 New Vegas without any pre-announcement, so when they finish the project and have everything polished, they'll just release it out of the blue, completely blindsiding us with an absolute gem, and every Fallout YouTuber will be scrambling to be the first one to make a video about it. Another important thing to clarify is that they will not be releasing any sort of playtest or alpha version for us to try out as they continue development. They're only releasing the game to the public once it's completely done. But as I've mentioned earlier, they have been releasing things like gameplay features and weapons as standalone mods for Fallout 4, and I'm sure we'll get even more as development continues. So, even if for uh, some reason they have to halt development, not all is lost because their mods for Fallout 4 already provide us with plenty of new content. If it isn't apparent already, this Fallout New Vegas remake will only be available on PC. It's not because the mod team hates console players, it's because the game relies heavily on the Fallout 4 script extender, and that's used to implement all of their features and gameplay systems. F4SE simply cannot run on console, sadly. And yes, 
The remake will be free for us PC users to download. I'm assuming they'll release it as a mod on the Nexus, and then you install that mod into your Fallout 4. But of course, it'll transform it into a different, much better game. Lastly, if you've got any game development experience and are looking to join the project yourself, you can certainly do so by applying to join the F4NV team, and I'll link that down below. They could always use more help, especially when it comes to the quest department. I think that's pretty much everything that we currently know about the Fallout 4 New Vegas remake. There are still plenty more small details I could go into, but for now, that is all of the important stuff. I've been following this project for years now, and after seeing it make so much progress, I have high hopes that they'll actually be able to finish it. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to it as well. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I'll see y'all in the next video. But before you go, if you're interested in making your Fallout 4 a little bit more like New Vegas, then you'll definitely want to check out these two videos.